Okay, so, well, thank you, Florian, for the introduction. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, I'm Martin Gasho from Core Security. Uh, I'm from Argentina. Uh, we are based there. Uh, our research uh, and consulting teams are, are in Argentina. Um, and this talk is about uh, Honeysub or my try at building a honeypot for SAP services. So uh, the agenda will be a quick introduction on SAP, SAP security, what I think is the current uh, threat landscape uh, in SAP systems, a uh, quick introduction on honeypots, and then I will introduce uh, the HoneySAP, uh, the approach I took for, for building this, uh, finishing with some demos, talking about some of the challenges uh, I have in, uh, when working on this, and also a call for contributions and, and some conclusions. So for if there's anyone that doesn't know what SAP is, uh, well, it's a software company. It's based in Germany. Uh, it's focused on business processes and business software. So most of the large companies of the world uh, run their critical business process uh, up uh, to SAP systems. Um, and at some point, it's about money. It's, it's where the company's money is it's handling. So uh, security in SAP, it's obviously, be because of that, uh, a very uh, high uh, issue and a very important thing. Uh, some of the things I found in... in, in Sorry, I think there's a microphone. Oh. Is it working? Is it working? Yeah, yes. ah, yeah. Okay. maybe it's a little lower. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, well, one of the things I, I, I think about security in SAP is that it requires uh, specialized skills. Uh, it's kind of different to, to run security uh, in SAP systems than in, in other uh, environments. So it requires people very specialized on, on this. Uh, it also requires some commitment, mostly from the management, because uh, when you are doing security in SAP, you are at some point touching the critical process of, of your company. So it requires a lot of commitment. And also it requires the companies to have a risk culture, to, to have an understanding of, of what are the actual risks your system are, are, are at some point uh, across. So it's also about money. Uh, because running all, all these and having specialist uh, people working on this requires money. Uh, having commitment also uh, at some point requires, requires money. So uh, the picture of uh, SAP security in the recent years uh, has been changing. Uh, at least from, from my standpoint, uh, it started first uh, a few years ago a lot of years actually, but most of the focus were on the users' uh, segregation of duties, the roles, and the way the users of the systems access them. Um, then this, this is start to, to, to mess up, and it, when, when companies uh, start to, to implement a large uh, amount of uh, users' access in SAP systems, uh, there, there was a need to at some point automatize and have uh, softwares that uh, allows uh, companies to check uh, those access and then the GRC uh, platforms at some point arise. Um, more recently, uh, I start to see a lot of different approaches for manually testing security on SAP. Uh, there are a lot of tools, uh, a lot of new attack vectors, uh, and that involves at some point a lot of tools, a lot of things you can do for, for testing uh, security in SAP systems. And more recently, some of these tools started to, to uh, at some point to grow uh, uh, and to be more automatic tools. So the idea is that now you have some vendors uh, and a whole industry that allows you to run some automated tools. The tools. Uh, for testing your your SAP systems, so it, it has been changed at, at some points. So the main threats that I see uh, that affects SAP systems first is complexity. Well, Harun 
mention it in, 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 in the talk, but uh, all these AP systems are really complex, uh, are, are really big, and they are really complex, and the complexity at some point is something that is, is a threat uh, for, for SAP. Also customization, each system is different to, to another one. So you have the chance to customize uh, and build your own code uh, upon SAP. So it's also that also adds another layer of complexity to the systems. Uh, and I found that another thread is the lack of knowledge. Uh, at some point, we, we are still uh, like in the early stages of, of knowing how to protect our SAP system in, in some point. So uh, the, the business dynamics is also something that uh, it's a threat for SAP system. If you want to defend a system, but you can't uh, shut down for a few minutes to batch it, uh, the, the business dynamics requires that uh, you, you, you should find another ways of, of doing things like maybe in other environments are, are more easier. So this is something uh, also uh, that uh, threats at some point SAP. Uh, so going to more practical uh, uh, and, and less abstract issues, the threats are obviously fraud, espionage, sabotage, and obviously all the things that the bad guys can do in, on your SAP systems. And it's also uh, interesting that you have to consider both insiders and outsiders, attacker or adversaries. Uh, this is also something that is uh, sometimes is not really clear in companies uh, when they are focusing uh, on protecting the perimeter uh, and maybe not uh, the, the insider vectors. Uh, so going to and following with the threat landscape, uh, well, I know that there are targets, attacks, again, SAP system that has been known for years. I mean, uh, at some point, anyone running SAP on a large company uh, suffer for, for, for some kind of target attack. Uh, at some point, there are tradition, e, traditional in, in the sense that uh, the attackers are following the, the steps, the usual step for, for a target attack. Um, another thing is that in most cases, the targets or the companies being targeted of these kind of attacks uh, were not disclosing data. Uh, but in the recent years, there are uh, some kind of uh, appearances in, me in the media. Uh, and it, this is also that at some point ch changed a little bit the, the, the landscape, the threat landscape, uh, because other companies are now more aware that they are being targeted for, for, for these kind of attacks. But also, we have started to see broad attacks or, or at some point started to see uh, some attacks that uh, are, are made for, for, for broad uh, surface. Uh, like for example, some malware looking for SAP services or SAP software. Uh, this is something that happened uh, just uh, one or two years ago. But for example, there were some malware uh, pieces that were looking for uh, sub gi installations uh, in the workstations of, of the infected users. So this is something that at some point we have to take and keep into mind because uh, it's, it's changing. And in the way that uh, it is start to be more common, it will be also another challenge. So what I think also is that broad attacks will be probably, I, I mean, uh, I don't think or I, I can envision uh, any scenario where uh, Marwell will be spreading exploits to SAP systems everywhere, but yet I think that it will be probably used as an entry point for target attacks. I mean, running a malware campaign that allows you to discover which users access to SAP systems uh, allows attackers to uh, perform more target attacks against those users. So this landscape uh, uh, it's well composed by two different type of attacks. But uh, as as I said, I think that they are really connected, uh, mostly because 
broad attacks will be probably used as entry point for more target attacks. So what do we have? Uh, I think that we have some knowledge about what is going on on SCP security and what the attackers are doing. Uh, but also that knowledge is somewhat distributed uh, and it's distributed not among uh, a very large audience, but a very close one. Uh, Andreas, which is somewhere else, uh, somewhere there, always always mentioned that the the people disclosing and actually finding vulnerabilities in SAP, uh, it's it's close to a, a really a really small number of companies. So we have some knowledge, but it's distributed in in, in a small. Uh, amount of, of people who has this knowledge. Um, and at some point, I think, uh, this is personal, but I think that we have some weak defenses at, uh, at some points. Talking with customers, I always find that uh, there's uh, a lot of room for improvement. And anyone doing pen testing of SAP will find that at some point, they will succeed. Uh, so. What do we need? I think that we need to act. We need to change the way we do security or we defend security uh, on SAP systems. But for acting, we need first to learn. We, 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 uh, actually, Haron also pointed that we can defend something that we don't understand. So uh, I think that we have to learn how attackers are uh, doing the attacks against our SAP systems. Uh, we need to share that information. It's, it's almost, it will be really difficult if you keep that information only on closed cycles. So one of the approach of knowing uh, the way the attackers are uh, performing attacks against uh, different systems are honeypots. For anyone that doesn't know what honeypot is, it's basically a piece of software put on a network uh, that tries to mimic some actual systems and records and logs everything that happens. So the idea is that you put a system like as a trap, the attackers attack those systems and you gather all the information about how they uh, did it. So there are different honeypots uh, of different types uh, with different goals. Uh, a different kind of implementations. Uh, you can implement honeypots in, in very different ways. So uh, the type of honeypots uh, are probably two, are two probably main uh, categories uh, for, for uh, classifying the honeypots. The first, the interaction. Uh, you can have a honeypot uh, with a high interaction, which means that the attacker can Logging into a system and perform some actions, uh, it will see it like if it was a real uh, system, uh, and they can complete a flow uh, uh, from the beginning to the end. There are other honeypots that are aimed at a medium level interaction when you can log into the system but only perform some actions uh, and no more than that. And others that are low interaction uh, base, which means that. You can spot the service, you can perform some basic actions, uh, but you will probably won't be able to log in and, 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 and look at the system if it was a, a complete implementation. Um, and also another type of honeypots, uh, another category for honeypots, it's, it's based on the purpose. Uh, you can have honeypots aimed at research, which means that uh, the idea, the main goal is to gather information uh, about new type of attacks or novel ways of attacks to these uh, services. Or, or you can have a honeypot aimed at uh, putting it on a production network um, and, for example, gather information more about the operational uh, thing and more about the traffic it's, it's receiving. Uh, but maybe it doesn't allow you to, to learn uh, about new kind of attacks. It's more aimed at uh, spot information and known attacks uh, against these kind of systems. So 
well, as I said, there are different goals, but the, the main one is that you gather information from a honeypot. Uh, you put it at, at some point, and the idea is to you to obtain information about the attackers. There are also other honeypots aimed at catching malware. Um, this is uh, really interesting, uh, and it has different implementations for different protocols and from different type of, of things. There are, for example, client side uh, honeypots that are web clients that are downloading uh, stuff from bad uh, URLs and bad websites um, and records everything and tries to analyze the, the, the malware they, they got. And there are all the honeypots aim at uh, or distract just the idea is to put it uh, along with the production network. Uh, so at some point the attackers uh, got there and focus on that host that seems to be vulnerable uh, instead of attacking the, the actual the actual systems. Uh, well, obviously there are other uh, goals and other things you you can you can think about. Uh, well, th there's a lot of honeypots actually uh, in the in the community, uh, mostly focus on more common uh, protocols and services. Uh, I, I think that th there's one which is really interesting because it shares some of the goals with the one that I, I tried to build, uh, which is Compot. It's there, but it's a, a SCADA ICS uh, honeypot, um, and it implements, uh, for example, some SCADA protocols uh, or for protocols for industrial uh, control systems. Um, and well, there are others aim at, as I said, uh, FTP, HTTP, uh, client side, RDP. It's full of different options you can you can use. So, well, uh, the goal of this talk is to introduce HoneySap, uh, which is the, the the piece of Honeypot I, I tried to, to to build. The approach I took was to build a low interaction Honeypot, uh, building a high or medium interaction honeypot for SAP will be something really challenging because the services uh, and the interfaces are really complex uh, and it's something that uh, it will require a lot of effort and love of engineering. Um, and at some point, I don't think that uh, at this stage uh, it will be a good idea to put that effort on, on, on building a high interaction uh, or medium interaction honeypot. And instead, I prefer to focus uh, on see what happens when uh, the attackers see the services and they, uh, try to catch the first steps of, of the attacks. Uh, also, it's research centric, mostly because uh, it's one of the first one uh, aimed at SAP systems. and. We don't have so much information about how attackers are, are doing uh, against SAP systems. So I think that the the the, the main goal will be to to have some uh, valuable information about how the attackers are are doing. Uh, uh, well, another interesting, uh, I, I think that is one of the most interesting one is that uh, the idea is that this will be open source. And um, this is an important part because, uh, as I say, I think that the, the more valuable part of running a, honey, a honeypot uh, is to share information with the different parties. So this being open source allows anyone to contribute, uh, to extend it, to try different approach, um, to try different things, customize the, the software uh, for running in their own networks, uh, and try to to build a community of people willing to contribute and share all the information uh, gathered uh, with this software. Uh, well, the goals, uh, it obviously has a specific purpose. Uh, there are other, other uh, honeypots that are more general purpose. Like, for example, if you have a ACSH uh, honeypot, uh, it's something that it will catch a uh, lot of different kind of attacks. 
uh, I mean script kiddies trying to brute force logins and actual target attacks looking at the information of your company and trying to, to log in. In this case, the goal is uh, that this honeypot is, it has a very specific purpose, uh, which is mimic SAP services. Um, the idea is to identify the behavior of the attackers and what they do when they found SAP systems running somewhere. Um, another goal is, is that it will be flexible. And by flexible, I mean that the idea is that it will be as, as self-contained as possible and as lightweight as possible so anyone can run it in anywhere. I mean, for example, a company may have uh, like different branches, uh, branch offices, and they want to put uh, one of these on a Raspberry Pi and ship it to one of the, uh, each one of their offices, for example, and running on internal networks. It's, it's something that uh, it's a goal from, from, from the design uh, stage to, to be the more flexible uh, that uh, it's possible. Uh, another is agility, is the idea that uh, you can plug new models or new services uh, and the idea is that it will require at some point uh, the less effort as possible to extend it or to, to build new things uh, upon this. Uh, well, the main design of the Honeypot is that uh, it's extendable. Uh, the idea is that you can add services or add feeds. Feeds are the way you share the information or you publish the information that the Honeypot is uh, collecting. Uh, so the idea is that you can customize and add new services or new ways to publish the, the information that the Honeypot is, is logging. Um, another design goal is that it's modular, is that you can plug in and plug out different components. And uh, there's a dynamic loader uh, which aim is to uh, load the different modules, the different uh, service uh, and objects uh, based on uh, the configuration. Um, and well, also the services, the feeds, and a data store is modular. I, I will be uh, giving more details about these components in, in a few slides. But the, the main idea is that uh, you can uh, plug in and plug out different components of, of the software. Um, another design decision is that uh, it should be easy to configure it. Uh, I mean, most of the failures of some of the honeypots is that they are at some point difficult to configure. Uh, the idea is that anyone can download and without having a specific knowledge or, or a very high knowledge about SAP or about honeypots, uh, the idea is that anyone can, can run it and configure it. So configuration is based on JSON or uh, JML files. So the idea is that you put all the configuration in a file and it's, it, it reads it. And the idea is also to ship it with some default profiles for example standard uh, network scenarios, uh, like an external network or an internal network. Um, another of the design goals is that it should be easy to deploy it. Uh, um, by this I mean that if you are having ha hard times at configuring or deploying the software, if you need a lot of dependencies, if you need to build custom binaries uh, and things like that, uh, it will be kind of difficult to, to have a mass deployment or, or a broad deployment of this kind of software. Uh, so well, I'm working on, on having a, a background uh, and Ansible uh, configuration for deploying it. Uh, background is a software that uh, allows you to easily uh, boot up uh, VM uh, virtual machines based on a configuration. Uh, for example, by running one command, you can uh, start up uh, a virtual machine with all the configuration 
and all the Honeybot configure and, and install there, uh, mostly for testing but also for actual deployment. And Ansible is a, a tool for uh, deployment, distributed deployment of, of different kind of softwares. Uh, so the idea is that by combining, combining two, these two teams, it's a little, uh, at least a start for trying to easy the deployment and the testing of this, this software. And also I'm working on a Docker configuration, which I think it will be nice to have uh, because it allows you to also easily uh, bootstrap and launch uh, uh, an instance of the, of the Honeypot. Um, well, the, the architecture of the Honeypot, uh, it's based, uh, it's built on Python, Python language. Um, it's ba based also on a, a few libraries. Uh, the first is G-Event, which is a coroutine, uh, coroutine library that allows you to, to implement concurrent services. Uh, it's also written in Python, and it's based on some standard libraries of, of, of Linux uh, libraries. Um, the other main company uh, library this is based on is PySAP, which is uh, the library I presented last year. Uh, it's basically a library for crafting and decoding packets on different uh, network protocols uh, specifics for, for SAP. Uh, this is at some point the result of some reverse engineer work uh, I, I have been doing for, for some of the protocols. Um, another of the libraries this is based upon is, is Flask, which is uh, an HTTP server for implementing the HTTP services uh, of SAP. Uh, so the core of the Honeypot uh, is based on different components. Uh, the main one is uh, a data store manager. This, the main ones are a data store manager, a service, a session, and feed managers. Um, the idea is that you can have, uh, talking about the feed manager, you can have different ways of publish the, the information um, to different feeds, like for example, logging all the information on a database or sending it to a remote feed or uh, throwing it to the console or anywhere. So there's a manager component that handles all, all that stuff. Uh, the same for the service services. There's a service manager which is in charge of loading and running all the different services you can configure. Um, a session manager which is uh, the one handling all the attack sessions. The idea is that any, uh, any time to have, uh, someone uh, starts a connection with the honeypot, there's a session created, and you can track all the interaction this client is, is, is performing uh, through a session, so everything is logged uh, within the same session, so you can, you can track all, 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 all the things that this, uh, this attacker uh, did. Uh, and also a data store manager, uh, because the idea is that different services can modify information that is shared. For example, uh, if you have a, a dispatcher service which is serving a login, uh, and someone logins to a dispatcher service and change some information, uh, this information should be reflected at some point on other services. If you are at some point uh, listing the clients that are connected to the SAP system, uh, this client should be appear on the other service. So the idea is to have a like a kind of data store that uh, allows the different services to share information and store information. Um, and well, then there are some utility uh, objects like uh, loggers, the class loaders, and all the handling of the, the configuration. And upon this, there are the different feeds implementation. Uh, as said, you can log everything to a database, to the, throw it to the console, log into a file, or sending it to HP feeds. HP feeds is a, a very standard feed system uh, for different honeypots. And the idea is that it's a distributed model when 
different clients can subscribe to uh, subscribe, subscribe and publish to the same channels. So the idea is that uh, you can subscribe to a channel and any time that a honeypot somewhere publish information to that channel, you can get all the, all the feeds. So the idea is that you can easily share uh, information uh, and share what is going on on, on the different honeypots. Uh, and well, the last part uh, oops, uh, of the architecture picture uh, are the services. Uh, as I say, they share a, a common data store, uh, and then there are the different services uh, that are implemented or can be implemented. So th th this is the whole uh, picture of the architecture. Uh, well, I say the idea is that the data store shares information and any service can uh, put uh, something that it should be reflected on the other ones. Uh, for example, the message server uh, is an SAP service that you can query the list of clients that are connected. Uh, so if at some point some other services logins a client, uh, it should be reflected on, on that service. Or, or if you configure a distributed environment with different SAP instances or different clients, um, that should be also reflected on some of the other services. So the idea is that it's a key store, uh, key value store, uh, and any service can push or, or, or pop information from, from there. Um, about the services, where well, there are some that are HTTP based. Uh, ICM is, is the, the, the first example, which is a, a standard service uh, of SAP implemented based on, on HTTP. Uh, and it allows different kind of uh, services to, to be run upon this, uh, this one. Uh, the Mesa server is another component that has uh, an HTTP interface for, uh, for example, when clients are logging to an SAP system, uh, they load the, the load balancing information uh, from this service, and that part is implemented in HTTP. Uh, there's also a web dispatcher service that uh, you can put, like in your DMC, uh, and allow external users to access internal HTTP services, and this also can be implemented in the, in the, in the Honeypot. Uh, and well, for example, the NetWeaver Gateway, which is a service uh, for implementing uh, web services. Um, and well, there are other services that are based on PySAP, are based on binary protocols. Uh, for example, the SAP router, uh, the message server, it, it has a, a a binary protocol also, the dispatcher service, which is the service used when you log in, and the gateway, uh, which is the one handling RFC, uh, RFC communications and things like that. So the idea is that there's at least a, a, a big distinction on, on these two different kind of uh, services and implementation is somewhat uh, kind of different, uh, mostly because of the, the protocol uh, which is based on. Uh, there are also some special services or, or, or concepts about the services. The first is the virtual services. The idea is that you can, uh, the Honeypot can uh, run a service which I call virtual, uh, and that means that the service is not actually listening to, to a TCP port, but instead is running on a virtual IP address. Um, and it mostly allows the routing and dispatching. So if you, for example, build uh, an environment when you put a sub-router on external uh, interface, you want to have attackers uh, to route traffic to internally exposed services. So the idea is that this way you can configure different services to be virtual services uh, and this allows uh, the sub-router to route the traffic to the virtual services, which are not actually running on a, on a real TCP port. Um, 
another component is the forwarder service. So let's think that you want to, for example, allow a sub-router uh, to route traffic to an internal SSH service, and you want to put uh, an SSH honeypot uh, inside your virtual uh, network, uh, the forwarder service uh, can be configured to be a virtual service, so you can forward the traffic uh, that the attackers are routing through, for example, the sub-router to a real uh, honeypot uh, for ACSH. So um, actually another use of the forwarder service is that you can forward traffic to real external services. You can run uh, another piece of software in the honeypot uh, host uh, and forward the traffic uh, instead of directly exposing it uh, to, to the external uh, interface, you can forward the traffic so all the packets will be logged by the, by the honeypot. So the idea is that you can have a trace of the whole session of, of, of the attackers. So there are a lot of points of integration with different things like I said, you can integrate with different honeypots, uh, routing traffic to, to an SSH honeypot, uh, to web-based uh, honeypots, or things like that. Um, also, the idea is to share the deployment at some point with other type of honeypots. So uh, you can put together different services, not only for SAP, but also for other services. I mean, in an internal network, uh, you will find that the SAP servers are not only running SAP services, but are running remote access services. Uh, RDP if it's Windows, or SSH if it's uh, a Linux box, or, or things like that. So the idea is that at some point, uh, a, a good deployment will, be, will involve also integration within different types of honeypots. Uh, and also it's possible to integrate it with actual systems running I don't know if it's a good idea, but uh, it's possible, uh, mostly uh, through the routing and dispatching. Um, another point of integration is, as I said, the standard feeds. Uh, the HP feeds uh, feature is already implemented, but it's possible also to extend to another feed. Uh, taxi and sticks are, for example, some standard formats for sharing information uh, uh, of ongoing attacks and honeypots. Uh, I think that both are at some point uh, sponsored by Mitre or, or something like that, and there are a lot of uh, services and, and products, uh, even production products, that are using these kind of feeds to gather information about ongoing attacks. So the idea is that it, that will, should be or could be also implemented at, at some point. Uh, and you can publish information in these formats. Uh, and well, there are other points of integration that uh, it will be possible to, to, to implement. So uh, le let's give an example of uh, an external profile. So the idea is that you have the internet somewhere, you have the, your adversaries, uh, which are the bad guys, the attackers, or a state sponsor, uh, something or anyone, uh, and you have the HoneySAP bind to an external interface running the sub router service. So the idea is that, for example, an adversary identifies the sub router service, it's discover open roads uh, with the sub router, something that you can do, and it's something really common when you are doing a penetration test, uh, is that you can prove the sub-router for, for internal routes uh, and see if the sub-router accepts uh, routes for internal services. So let's think, for example, that the adversary discovers some open routes to internally exposed services. Uh, the attacker requests a road to the internally served uh, system that they think that they are actually uh, running on internal IP addresses. Um, and the honeypot, at some point, forwards all the traffic from the sub-router to the internal virtual services. 
Like for example, you can have a subrouter connected to an internal dispatcher service or gateway service. And by going through the subrouter, you can request an RFC uh, call, for example. Or you can also uh, expose, uh, like in, in the sample I mentioned, uh, other honeypots as internal services. So you can build an entire virtual uh, network that is exposed somewhat uh, uh, through the subrouter uh, and obviously log all the information. Uh, another scenario will be uh, based on the HTTP part. Uh, the ICM service is a service that uh, it's commonly used uh, through the web dispatcher uh, for putting it on the DMC and expose internal uh, serve uh, services. Um, and this is also something that you can find open ICM services on the internet. So uh, let's think that the adversary found and identifies the ICM services. Uh, it scans it for exposed uh, services running upon this. Uh, and at some point access the internal ICF services that are actually virtual services uh, implemented on the, on the Honeypot. Uh, and uh, the last example I want to give is uh, an example of an internal network. Uh, when you can have different virtual services like gateway, dispatcher, mesh service, or all, all the services that are typically found on an internal network uh, along with the ICM service. Uh, and for example, if an adversary identifies it, uh, it can access the, the different services and everything will be logged by, by the Honeypot. Uh, so well, I, I will try to give a, a quick demo of some of the services uh, working. Um, the idea is that this shell will run a Honeypot with a standard configuration. I don't know if maybe it's too small, but well, the idea is that you can configure some things about the login uh, or, oops, sorry. Oops. Um, about the configuration about the instant and how it, the SAP system uh, will look like. Like this is a 7.2.0 release. The instant name is NSP, which is the trial version number. The client number is 001. The SID is PRD, uh, and what else? Uh, and you can configure the different services. This is an example of an external subrouter listening on the port 3299. Uh, the router version, you can configure anything. Uh, you can allow, for example, external administration of the subrouter uh, you can configure all, all the different options. Um, there's also something interesting is that you can uh, specify the road table uh, here. So the idea is that you include a configuration file that contains the road table you want for the, the sub-router. Um, and then you have some different uh, services which can be actual services or virtual <coughs> ones. Uh, for example, this is uh, a dispatcher services that allows you to log in to, to with the sub uh running on the port 3200. Um, this is, for example, an internal, an actual ICM service running on an internal network, and it's being forwarded uh, to a virtual internal IP. So the idea is that attackers uh, if they look at the sub-router, they will find that the, this IP address is exposing these services. And um, when they request a route to that service, that will be routed to an actual service running on another uh, IP address. And so on. And finally, there's the configuration for the feeds and all the login. Uh, I will show, for example, the route table. The idea is that at some point it's similar 
to, to the sub route table. Uh, but you can allow uh, access to different IP addresses, different ports. Uh, you can also specify a password, uh, which is something you can do in, in sub router. You can deny it on a specific road uh, and so on. So I if you run the honeypot, it will start. Well, it's, uh, it's in the back mode, so it's logging a lot of stuff. But what we can do, for example, is to scan the actual honeypot. It's logging every try, but the idea is that here we are asking to the sub router uh, if they have a road to all those, uh, all that uh, IP range uh, for different services. Uh, in this case, the script found that the, those two hosts uh, have exposed services. One is a dispatcher and another is an ICM. Um, for example, I can request the honeypot. I want to talk with this internal service uh, and please forward the traffic to uh, a local uh, port on my machine. And for example, I can access an internal ICM service uh, being routed through the virtual or the honeypot uh, sub router service. Uh, and the same you can do, for example, for the sub GI. You can uh, log in to, this is a virtual dispatcher service. This is not a real one, it's the one in the, in the honeypot. Uh, you can see that the instance is the one that we configured uh, in the file and well you can customize all the different menus and all the different stuff and it allows for example to try to log in and it says that it's enabled to process but it's actually gathering inf the information so if an attacker is doing uh, a login brute force for example we can gather all the tries that they are doing uh, and, and see what are the things that uh, they, they, are, they are trying. Uh, and another example is an internal service being forwarded to, through the subrouter. Uh, and for example, I can also log into another service. This is an actual SAP system that I'm running uh, on a VM. Uh, you can see that it has a different uh, instance. Uh, and, and you can forward all the traffic through the sub router, which is uh, the honeypot itself. So the idea is that all this, uh, it's been logged and pushed at some point to, if you configure the feeds, uh, you can publish all this information and share this information with, with other other people. <laughs> uh, so, well, some of the challenges I face uh, at building this, well, the core development, the development of all the core libraries and all that stuff, uh, it was uh, kind of a challenge trying to build a, a modular structure or an architecture that allows uh, the things that I think are, are, are the needs. Uh, also, making G-Event work with the SCAPI and with Flask, which is the HTTP server implementation, is something kind of challenging. Uh, another thing is that you need to have a lot of knowledge of each of the services if you want to mimic. Uh, sometimes knowing the packet formats is not enough and you need to know the actual behavior of the service. Uh, and this is something that takes a lot of time to, to, to research. Um, finally, another challenge is the detection. Uh, being these protocols so complex, uh, it's also challenging to build something that appears to be an actual SAP system. Uh, 
And also, there are some services that are implemented in non standard way. For example, some HTTP based uh, services in, in, in SAP uh, behaves different to the standard. And for example, I don't know, from the order of the headers to the case sensitivity to the allowance of different protocols in the HTTP request, all, all, all of those things you have to at some point uh, keep it in mind and try to implement it uh, because otherwise it will be very easy to spot that this is a honeypot and not an actual SAP system. Uh, for example, error messages, uh, there are different type of messages uh, at different levels of, of a request. Uh, if you miss some field on a request, the error messages are different uh, for each one of the fields. So you have to also take care of, of that uh, and try to implement all that behavior on, on the honeypot. Uh, well, as I said, HTTP servers are, are one of the examples of non-standard behavior. Uh, well, so I, I have some doubts about the performance and how this will work uh, in an actual environment with high traffic. I'm not sure about that. There are a lot of jokes about performance of actual SAP systems, so I'm not worried at all uh, at that. Uh, but well, it's it's something that we we might see uh, in 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 the future, mostly if uh, there are some implementations with high traffic going to to the honeypots. Uh, mostly, the main challenge is that uh, the binary protocols are implemented using PySAP, which is based on SCAPI. Uh, and SCAPI is a library for crafting uh, packets, uh, which at some point uh, does some buffering. Uh, and that's something that if you are having high traffic, it's, it's, not, it's not probably something that you, you want. Uh, so we will see. Uh, and another challenge is that uh, we need to at some point find the find what it will be the best to log, what things we want to have, what information we want to have on each of the different services, and what things the attackers are, are doing. Uh, also, another challenge is to determine the indications of attacks or indications of compromise. Uh, for example, there are different standard ways of uh, representing uh, these concepts of uh, I'm being attacked, and, and this is what attacks looks like. So at some point, we have to think about uh, how to implement this and how to identify this type of situations using the information provided by the, the honeypot. Uh, well, and also another challenge is to have deployments. Uh, the idea is to make it easier to, to deploy it, but uh, it will take, obviously, a uh, time to people start uh, implementing and deploying this on, on their own networks and also integrate it to the different honeypots, different feed systems and things like that. I, also, this I think I, it's, a, it's a good challenge to, to have. So, a couple of contributions. Uh, well, I think that at some point, I said in the beginning, the best that uh, we can have with this kind of software is uh, when a lot of people is running it and sharing information. Uh, so the idea is that anyone can run it, test it, patch it, uh, submit the information or anything. Uh, obviously collect and analyze what's going on uh, on the exposed uh, honeypots. And obviously extend it if anyone wants to implement custom protocols or customize the different services that are actually uh, implemented uh, to reflect some customizations in their own network, for example, or, or things like that. Um, well, the, this will be soon published on GitHub and on the Core Labs uh, site, uh, probably next week when I arrive to home. Um, it has a GPL version 2 license, so the idea is that this will be kept open source, and the idea is that 
if someone wants to extend it, the idea is that uh, it also shares what they did. Uh, I think that this is the, the, the most important part of building this kind of software. Uh, and also, I'm, I'm working on a data feed to, to, to have a common uh, feed so anyone that can install a, a honeypot can have the same information uh, and we can share uh, all the different uh, attack session feeds that are, are, are going on. Perfect. Uh, so some conclusions. Well, at some point, I think that we have a little more knowledge about some of the services because uh, by trying to implement it, it, it required me to, to have uh, some knowledge about the services, uh, mostly about the behavior, not only the packets, which is what I have been doing in the last years, but also about the uh, behavior and the different interactions within the clients uh, and the services. Uh, well, at some point we have a new source of information about attacks, um, and also a different approach or a new approach for defense on SAP systems. So. This is what uh, I think is the, the outcome. Um, I don't know if anyone has questions. Yes. Do you, yeah. do you have it implemented somewhere where we can actually start scanning and see how it works? On your server, which actually connects to, say, a demo as a server? Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I've been running a few instances uh, in different cloud providers and things like that, mostly to test it and gather information. Uh, I didn't start yet to deploy uh, instances aim at, at, at start gathering information. The idea is to, to share it. Uh, but also the idea is that anyone can download and run it locally and see how it looks like uh, and start playing with it. That, that's the main idea. That's my, my main goal, that anyone can download it uh, and run it locally. And if they see that it found that uh, they have a place to put it uh, on your internal network or your external one, uh, just can do it. That, that's the main idea. Yeah. No. The, the question was if uh, I, I I saw actual attacks going on on the instances I've been running, uh, and the response is that yes, but at some point when the guys see that there are SAP services, they did some basic checks, basic connections, and they moved to either another host or another thing. So, so I think that I, I didn't met yet something that has the knowledge to, to, to at some point attack a, a specific SAP service. Uh, so another thing that I think will be interesting is that maybe we can start seeing actual targets attacks against SAP systems when we put the honeypot along with or in a company that ha is known to run SAP systems or along with actual SAP uh, services. Uh, I think that the, the the good thing will be that I mean uh, running it along with services that are actual SAP systems and and when the attackers know that that company is running SAP so they have uh, the preparation for for doing attacks to, to to specific services so the response in general is that I, I saw some I, I have some uh, traffic some attacks uh, but not yet very specific to SAP. And, and I don't think also, I, I don't expect to have high traffic on these kind of things. I mean, if you run an SSH honeypot, you will be hit inst instantaneously. Yes. When you app the service, 
you will be being hit by scanners, scripts, and things like that. Uh, and this is not the case. I don't think that uh, it, it will uh, hit uh, high traffic. No. No, I'm not sure. I, what what I know is that there's a there was a project from the Hassel Planner Institute. Uh, actually, some of some of the guys here actually point me uh, to that. Uh, it's an uh, they took a different approach. It, it's an academic work, so uh, I didn't find a way to download the code or anything. But the approach they took is to build uh, like virtual machine services that uh, it's something, it's a different approach than that, that mine. Uh, I mean, uh, what I found reading the, the, the paper and the documentation is that they build uh, like virtual machines with SAP services running um, by handling snapshots and other things like that. They can isolate the traffic and the things that the attackers are doing. But it's a different approach. You, can, you can't deploy that on, on a cheaper device or, or yeah or put it on the internet like in if you had to run a run a entire SAP system uh, somewhere in the internet it's, it's it's something really different so the approach is different but I, I'm not sure about the the one you mentioned great so um, but is it um, is it urgent um, I would say you can ask the question but else Okay, then please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still working. I'm trying to, to document as much as possible. But uh, so far, it should be almost easy to, to, to start running it. Uh, it's, it's Python, so you can, it only has a few uh, requirement libraries. Uh, that can be handled automatically, uh, and also if you use background or Ansible, it should be very easy to 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 deploy it. So the idea is that uh, anyone can can do it. And if I need to improve the documentation on that part, please let me know, and I will try to to put the efforts on that. I, I prefer to 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 spend time working on 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 that. Uh, I have more people uh, trying it and testing it. So if there are no more urgent questions, I would say we thank Martin again. Okay.